Kelly, who is a lawyer. And just before we took the break, the question that I had posed to you was the question of what ails us as a country. We have enough institutions. In fact, if anything, we probably have more than uh, many countries would have. Uh, we have so many laws. We have a new constitution, which has a very specific chapter addressing integrity and leadership, which seems to be, um, uh, you know, b b b playing catch up. We are playing catch up with it. Let me come to you, Pamela, your thoughts on what really ails this country and how do we solve it? Thank you very much. Um, let's call a spade a spade and not a, book, uh, big, a big spoon. spoon. I am born again and I want to declare that to everyone. Now, Kenya is ailing from what I call unrighteousness. And what I mean by this is that even before we knew about God, we had our own systems. Kenyans had values. We had a Kenya, value system. a value system. We valued uprightness. We valued truth. We valued all that. And then added to Christianity, on which many of our laws, the chapters you are quoting, are actually based. I think what is ailing Kenya is departing from what is right due to greed for money wealth and power. And these three are actually ailing our country. Everybody wants to play around. And people worship money, people worship power, even if we are not sure how did Pamela get her money so that she is able to buy us around, to buy our way around. So long as I am rich, it is okay. Power, so long as I am in power, I am like, I can do everything with that power. And what Kenyans need to know is that this idea of greed is what is killing us. We are scavenging on one another and on everything. And this is what we need to turn from. So now, when you are talking about how do we help ourselves, the word is one. Let us turn back. Let us go back to the crossroads and start wondering, where did we lose it? Mm. Can we change our attitude? Can we change our thinking? Can we change our heart? Can we change our mind? Can You're we in just... a position of influence, yes. Pamela, and what are you going to do about that? Because at the exactly, end of the day... Exactly, exactly what I'm telling you. I campaigned for almost two and a half years. And this is what I was telling my people. You are not going to demand from me money which I don't have. I'm not going to steal to give you money. So... Listen to what I have to say. Listen to what the ideas that I have that can bring help our way. Migori County is a very rich country, county, but we are very poor. Majority of us are poor. And why are we poor? Because people, you know, the politician comes and say, I will do for you this, I will bring for you this, I will bring for you that. And you see, it is a collective responsibility. You can't wake up one person and make every household comfortable without them coming up and doing something together with you. So I was telling them, I don't have money. In fact, I told them, silver and gold I don't have. But I have, I'm loaded with ideas. I'm loaded with ideas that can be turned into projects mm -hmm. which will bring salvation, which will bring food to your table, which will bring money to your account. All and right. therefore, let us embrace that. Righteousness is the word. That's what we need as a country. Now, the other government department that has been entangled in the election quagmire is the judiciary. Right after issuing the ruling that became unpopular with Jubilee, President Uhuru Kenyatta, although respecting the verdict, started an attack on the Supreme Court, specifically on Chief Justice David Baraga. Early in the week, Uhuru reiterated he will continue the onslaught. Let's listen in to what he had to say. Kusema kwa wenzetu wa Kenya wenzetu wa Kisi ati yo uhuru ameanza kushambulia maraga anashambulia jamii ya wa Kisi <laughs> kwani yeye mwenyewe wakati alikuwa anawashambulia kule Mombasa na wakati alikuwa anashambulia Matiani alikuwa anashambulia Kisi au alikuwa anashambulia hao mimi nitaendelea kushambulia maraga Umpaka atuoneshe ni kwanjia gani alifanya waamuzi wa ukora. Kate, you're um, in Jubilee. What do you have to say about President Huruks Kenyatta's comments? Um, I believe the president is a human being. And that uh, uh, at this moment, he was in his low moments and he has been in his low moments. And low moments in regards to the same things you've been discussing this morning. What is ailing us and what is aching us? 
what I have to say, because I know where you want to direct me is whether the president was right or wrong, but my answer is this even before you ask me, is that I know the president, it is pre-assumed that he should not attack on those independent bodies. And I have always been saying this, the president is a human being, he has emotions, he has feelings too, and uh, he has a body, if he is attacked too, all his pricked blood will still come out like any other leader. Okay, and this... And number two, number two, like he said, it is said that other leaders, and especially the leader of opposition, they have been coming out strongly, attacking on the presidency and attacking also on the independent bodies. And nobody seems to be bothered about it. It doesn't ache. But if the president speaks and says this is right or this is wrong, then it is pre-assumed that the president is wrong. I think my take is this, that President Uhuru Kenyatta is a candidate today as we speak. He's going around campaigning, and I think he should be given his moment and his space also to speak about his fears with the system and fears with any other body, and especially the independent bodies like you said. Okay, so are you in agreement with what he has to say? Very much. You're in agreement? Yes. All right. Um, Jemima, could this be a problem that we have as a country because when we support a certain side, regardless of whether there are issues, we're not open enough to say that here we have made a mistake, despite the fact that, you know, this is my uh, political uh, support is on this side, but we're not open enough to admit and say where there's a mistake, there's a mistake. Exactly. And uh, many of the politicians, including uh, Moshimiwa here, they have no spine to challenge any decision, whether it's right or wrong, against their leader. What the president has said against the court, saying, uh, if I may quote him verbatim, wamusi wa ukora. So you are waiting for the chief justice to give you the reasons for wamusi wa ukora, meaning that whichever decisions comes, you still believe it was ukora. Coming from a president, for me, it's an no-no. One, that position of presidency, is a constitutional position. It doesn't matter who sits on that position. Kenyans expect that the president of the day will respect the constitution and the constitutionalism. If he is not satisfied with the decision, then one, he can... Um, you can appeal. He can, he can, I have not said appeal. He can decide to just keep quiet and wait for the process to follow. Or if he is aggrieved and thinks that the judges may have been unduly influenced or made decisions without um, basing themselves Only on the Constitution. He can petition for a tribunal. You know the processes of removing judges? We have that process. So when I see politicians disrespecting our Constitution and more so the President, for me as a lawyer, I am aggrieved. Why? Because he speaks to a bigger constituency. He speaks to Kenyans. So when he tells Kenyans that Uamusi wa ukora, does he expect us to go to the same courts and get justice? Break, you know, friends. it's not about politics. And the president is right to be aggrieved, but saying Uamusi wa ukora, it is an honor. He's for a me. Kenyan too. He let, spoke his feelings. Okay, let thank you very you, much. Uh, and and, and what, what, what I want us to look at also is the bigger picture because we have uh, a habit of our leaders rather, have a habit of attacking institutions. And it's not just the president. We've had all and sundry attack institutions yes. which are constitutionally in place. We can start from the EACC, go to the IEBC, go to the judiciary. Uh, we've had all leaders basically attack. The candidate okay, okay. I think the time was mine. What we are saying here, it is unfortunate. I want to bring it to the nation and everybody else. We are all emotional. We feel low, we feel high at a, some time of, the, of, of our lives. But what ought to have happened here is what I call self-restraint, self-control. Why I am talking and insisting on this word righteousness is that this same court in 2013, we saw it deliver a judgment. I know my leader, Raila Molodinga, and most of us did not agree with it. But what he said was, much as I don't agree with the judgment, I will still respect. What is in this? All of us leaders, including the president and even my sister who is sitting here, we all say we want to uphold the rule of the law in Kenya. So if that is what our Supreme Court has decided, and if the said individual is the problem, then she has said it. We have a system of tackling that. And we don't have to come out in the open. And it is not and any now time between attacking, now and the 17th Excuse, excuse, election. let me finish. Uh, you had your time. Um, it is not 
a matter of coming out to say such things and attacking individuals and personalities. Because you see, when we are talking about uh, threats, then that is what the threat of its highest order. Because you but, see, what, but, when somebody but, uh, who Pamela, has, who uh, are, on, just on. a minute, just, when somebody who uh, has the whole power in the country now talks about you like that, it, it is really disheartening. And, and what I don't want us to do, Pamela, yes. is specifically look at individuals, but look at our leaders from a, a, a unified Yes, platform. and that's why and we are saying... the reason why I'm saying that is because yes. in 2013, mm -hmm. when it was ruled, mm -hmm. even not even 2013, just recently we had Raila say mm -hmm. that the, the, high court, the, the court has yeah. uh, an opportunity to redeem itself, yes. which, which was translated yeah. more to be like and, a threat. And that's why we are saying... What is good for what the what we are saying here death. is, today as we sit here as women who are leaders and who believe in doing right, we are saying Kenyans need to turn to righteousness, whether it is which leader or which leader. And we just too, need to, do, yes, I'm so, talking about leaders. We you, need to do what is right for the sake bold, of righteousness. Should, is should, wrong, on, is wait, wait, wait. Should yeah. you be bold, would you be bold enough to uh, admit if Raila Odinga made a mistake, you'd say, yes, he is my leader, but still, here we have had. I think severally we have told him that. There are, there are cases where when we know something has gone wrong and we, we, we have had him correct it because that is it. Uh, I'm not sure we have any examples. Uh, I, 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 I think, um, I think uh, if I may just uh, indicate... Justice is a two-edged sword. It cuts both, both sides. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it cuts both ways. 2013, Raila lost. And we continue to be like... In this revenge? election, we it's had for the revenge. first time in Africa a presidential election overturned. Of course, this is it's like a, a miracle. Something happened. It was an so unexpected. It, uh, so this example. was not a, 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 a expected. We are not but the issue, Can you just no. give me time to, to respond? Mm. The issue is we have something called rule of law. And as I said before, as a country, we have to choose whether we follow the rule of law or the rule of anarchy. What the political class is trying to lead us to? Disobeying, uh, disrespecting courts as citizens, they will soon be citizens. Today you are elected, tomorrow you will not be elected, or something like that. So is the Huru and Raira. No, listen. So you will run to the same courts and seek justice. So will you expect justice from those who are chorus? So the thing is, we should all be uh, very afraid when our leadership, who we look up to, and our representatives, we have chosen them. We should be very afraid when they disrespect the courts, because the courts are usually the savior of the I guess the courts and, and, and institutional yes. bodies. Yes, yes. You know, what worries me is uh, uh, when we started this show, I had uh, my, my good sisters complaining about the same institutions and saying how they are not credible and there is that lack of integrity. But when it comes to the Supreme Court, I'm hearing the same friend here claiming that, um, you know, these people, we, we, we obey the rule of the law, we do what. I want to say here, they too, they're human beings like Uru, Muigai, Kenyatta. And if anything, it's just that they don't get space to speak what is in their mind. And I can say they are controlled, and some of them, they are put to a corner being harassed by some leaders in this country, who we all know, telling them, redeem yourself, you must do this, you must mm. not do that. Others are corrupt, I will not fear to say that. They go back door receiving money so that they do one, two, three, four, they do no. In favor of no, okay, no, but no. Uh, now you're no, throwing no, no, allegations. No, 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 you know, we have had a scenario in Kenya where every small and big thing people love to really argue over it forth and back. But come to think about it this way. I'm an educationist. I've uh, been working in the university until the time when I had to resign for this seat, yeah? And what I think about this whole issue, without thinking Raila way or any other person's way, if the court, I mean, the, the date was set for 17th uh, like it has been, now, before we went to other things, I think supposing we were just to consider that 17th or the exam situation, the other time we were electing six people. This time we are only electing one person. My independent thinking is, if we have all the preparations in place, all of them that are agreeable 
to both sides. This thing can actually take us half a day. From 5.30 in the morning so to around 11. So you disagree with Raila that... I uh, don't disagree to... with him because what Raila is complaining about it's is not, not just the exam. What Raila is complaining about and what NASA is complaining about, we are thinking we, the, the preparations and the, the, the gadgets to put, be put in place is not yet done by that 17th. Why? Because you can't tell me, my sister, just be patient, and we have said, let us exercise self-control. I go to a doctor. He gives me wrong medicine. He is found giving me that, and I'm ailing because of that. And then... You are telling me now that he's been found, let's go back to the same doctor without any changes made. Okay. I think that is what Israela is complaining about. It is not really the date per se, but the enough time for preparation and these uh, changes that would be required to g g retain the confidence. I had her talk about the, con the confidence of the voter. We want to feel everything has been done. So the question, and, yeah. so the question, the question so here the being, question do is you the preparation. agree with him or not? Yes. Question is, do you agree the with children him or not? Will not die, I don't like questions that give me yes or no because I've explained to you and what it is. And that is precisely what we are saying That's now. Why I'm saying are you able double to disagree double with your leader yes. if he is of a contrary yes, if, opinion? If, if You're an educationist. I can, I can disagree with him. But, but in this case, but in this case I'm not disagreeing with him because his, his, <laughs> way, his, content, his contention is, is not really the date per se. It is the preparations that needs to be put in place so that we are all ready for the election. I had you before I joined you asking, ni bora uchaguzi ama uchaguzi bora? We want uchaguzi bora not Bora Uchaguzi. And that is why the preparation has to be put in place okay. to restore that confidence. So and you, we, there is a need for enough time for so this. So you're not willing to tell us whether you and agree or disagree with I'm not willing to, to because okay. I, I, I've, I've expressed you my opinion and I've given you the premises. All right, and that's why I was asking, when it comes to our leaders, are we in a position, and maybe this is to you, Jemima, since you're not uh, in a political, um, uh, in terms of, of, of the panel that we have this morning, are we in a situation where we cannot be independent so long as we are affiliated to a party. As long as you're in a party, then you have to uh, speak whatever the leader says, regardless of whether you agree with it or not. I would not want to give a, a judgment as to whether all politicians are independent or not. I do know for sure some of the politicians can take their own stance and just move with those stance. And we've seen it uh, with them, of course. The your pay consequences, these are consequences of defying Whatever, your leader, yeah. not moving with your leader. And that's why you'll find many of them are just psychophants. They have to toe the line of the leader. Uh, the, the consequences of losing your seat or, you know, those, that is the fear. Um, and of course, one wishes that it will be different. And uh, the most important thing is for the party leaders then to realize that they have this control over their uh, would it be called disciples who are their politicians Followers. under their party and to give the leadership by ensuring that one, they comply with the constitution, they respect the constitution and live within the realms of the rule of law so that their own disciples who are their uh, uh, politicians under the, them they are able to then follow because most likely the disciples will automatically follow the route of the leader. All right, I think yes. I want us to wind up now. Let me come to you, Kate. Yes, and we have the elections on the 17th. What is it that you'd expect to be in place, especially in regards to the IEBC, with all this information that we have now? What is it that you are expecting must be in place by the time we get to the election? Um, we as Jubilee and also as a citizen, we expect the IEBC to put the house in order. Like we said earlier on, that uh, there are those crises, uh, they need to do something about it. And number two, I also, I, I have always I've been saying that we want IEBC also to give a sitting, one similar sitting with, I, with Jubilee and NASA for, uh, for them to do a reality check of the preparedness of the uh, 17th. And number three is to ask Kenyans to be very calm and not to be, you know, not to be thrown, you know, scared you know, by politicians, telling them Kenya is, is in crisis, people are going to die, one, two, three is going to happen. Uh, Kenya is going to move on from 17th. We'll have a president. By the end of the two, one, that one week, one person must be announced as the president of the Republic of Kenya. And doesn't matter who, Kenya must move on. And uh, maybe I wind up that conversation by agreeing that greed is something that is troubling this country. There are certain individuals who feel, if it is not me, then nobody else. I'm the most viable, I'm the most up 
upright person who should, who should lead this country. And I said, what is, goose, what is good for the goose is good for the duck. Don't be quick to point at people's eyes when you have a log inside your own eye. I think it's the high time we do a reality check on ourselves, and especially the two leaders. All right, Pamela, your closing comments. Thank you very much. My expectation is that IBC should fully prepare and we should not go into this election in a hurry when there are doubts here and there. Number two, I expect all the politicians, including myself, let, let's tell Kenyans the truth. Let us mobilize our voters simply to come out and vote. And vote, and whoever will be guarding that vote, let righteousness reign. When there will be open counting of that vote, I believe the peace that we are yearning for will fall in place. There is not going to be peace when there is no truth. In the absence of truth, there will be no peace. So it is important that the Kenyan nation remains peaceful, calm, and protected. Everybody, small and big. And above all, I want to call upon Kenyans, whether they are small or big, powerful or powerless, rich or poor, righteousness. Let us go back to our God and let God reign in all this situation. Jemima, Thank you. Your closing comments. Uh, thank you. For me, my closing uh, comments, as I have said through this discussion, is to call on uh, IEBC leadership to get their act together. Uh, look at uh, Kenya is now under their hands. They hold the country. Uh, they are responsible for credible elections. They are responsible for the peace of this country. Let them get their act together. We are looking at them, and we are also praying for them that they be able to overcome all these challenges, also to call upon the leadership of this country, uh, to also give uh, the facilitate high BC to be able to conduct our credible elections, give them funding, and more so also give them space to make their own independent decisions, also to call on both divide and more so the opposition to give the benefit of doubt to IBC so that they are able now to conduct the elections afresh as ordered by the court. And also to call on my fellow Kenyans that we remain calm because uh, as a country, we have institutions. Let us remain calm and not be swayed by the political class into their own anarchy. We should leave the political class to do their business and we continue with our own businesses our and our own assos. All right, thank you yes. very much, uh, Jemima Kelly, who's a lawyer. We also have Kate Waruguru, who's uh, like keep your woman rep, and last but not least, Pamela Odiambo, who's with Migori woman rep. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and, well, basically breaking it down as it is. For now, right here on Morning Express, we'd like to take a short break. We'll be right back with more stories making headlines both locally and internationally. Do stay with us.